back, legends. I hope you're all fantastic. We are going to continue our Rack Gear Odyssey today with the Korg DL8000R. This might be the best rack delay you've never heard of. Unless, of course, you're in the know with your vintage rack gear and you know exactly what this thing can do. I think most of us, when we hear Korg rack delay, we immediately think of the SDD 3000, its association with players like the Edge, the fact that it's got a lovely crunchy preamp on it that can add a whole bunch of character to your guitar tone, as well as the core delay tone and modulation on there, have made that pretty iconic. But this unit is a long way removed from the SDD 3000. This came out in the mid to late 90s. There was another processor called the AM8000 that I've done a video on the channel before, which is kind of reverb and multi-effects. This, however, just has a single multi-tap delay algorithm. You've got stereo inputs, each of which feed three delay taps and then a master feedback delay. So in total, you have eight echoes to play around with. There's LFOs, there's envelope controllers, there's filtering, there's the ability to have cross feedback. You can kind of freely assign modulation sources around and do so many things. That's really awesome, but the interface is pretty infuriating if you want to program this from scratch. Much like the AM8000R, you've got a function knob over here and a value knob. There is a cool warp control over here that you can assign to, again, pretty much anything you like so that you can just reach out to the unit and twist it and have wild and crazy things happen. You've got your input and output levels over here, and then you've got a few little buttons over there to control things like the hold function, bypass, a delay trigger, and then the ability to have it in milliseconds for the delay time or synced to rhythmic values. If I twist this function control, I just scroll through all the different parameters available on here. So you can see we've got the left side first. So there's three taps and then there is a feedback tap over here, feedback level, low damping, high damping. There's a pre-EQ that you can apply to each side. As you come through here, you've got a bunch of other parameters like the LFO, which you can switch on and off and assign to different parameters. We'll talk about how you assign that in a second. Uh, you can set the feedback type to be normal or to have cross feedback on here. There's a mixer section. If I press the function button, I can get in there and set all my delay levels. Uh, this display is really nice and big, but the fact that it's one parameter at a time is pretty infuriating to use. It kind of reminds me of the Sony DPS M7 and D7 in that regard. They're amazing units, much like this one. I love the way they sound, but they are pretty tiresome to program. So before we delve too far into the parameters, let's just hear some delay sounds that I've programmed over a backing track by the midnight. Then we'll hear some sounds in isolation. Let's go. <laughs> any further, I want to say a massive thank you to patron saint of the channel, Mr. Brian Hook, for sending this unit out to me. So I can make this video. Brian has sent me a lot of gear that is featured on the channel, so send him some love in the comment section below. I'll run through the presets that I used over that little jam. The very first 
preset here, I've just called LT1, really imaginative on my part there. You can see if we come in here, the pre-EQ is off, the pre-delay for the left side and the right side is zero. Then we've got 200 milliseconds, 400 milliseconds, 600 milliseconds, and 800 milliseconds, all from the left side. Then what I'm doing in the mixer section over there is I am just setting these up so that I can pan them to different parts of the stereo spectrum. You can also set the polarity, which is kind of cool if you want to have, say, your left side out of phase with your right side. You can assign various modulation sources, which again, I'll show you in a second. But yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a bunch of different delays and it sounds like this. <laughs> Sounds beautiful having those delays pan across the stereo spectrum with some modulation and chorusing in there. What I didn't tell you was I was using some of the other delay taps. In this case, I'm using the right delay tap number one set to 10 milliseconds. If I press the function button here, I can assign modulation on there. So I've got it set to on and I've set the source to be the LFO, then I can adjust the depth on there. I've done a similar thing with tap two, that's set to 12 milliseconds. The modulation there is currently off. I could switch it on by using this if I wanted to. And if I wanted to tweak the LFO, I'd have to scroll all the way across here to the LFO section. I can set it on. If I press the function button again, I can set the speed, the phase, the type, and whether I have it triggered over here. And I can also set the trigger threshold. So let's try like a sine wave LFO and let's tweak the speed a little bit. We go a little bit faster, closer to two Hertz. We get this. <laughs> It's a chore to set up, but it certainly does sound gorgeous. The second delay sound that I was using, I've just plugged in the values for the Lexicon PCM70 circular delay. Pre-EQ is off, pre-delay is out. What do I have? 888, 584, and 292 milliseconds on there. I think I have a bit of modulation and some filtering in here as well. Well, the feedback is at minus six, so that goes from negative infinity all the way up to zero, zero would be maximum feedback on there. Again, that's kind of weird. I'm used to seeing feedback as a percentage, but it does the job just fine. You can see I've got the high damping at 5.6K. Let's hear this one. <laughs> delay I have set up for a simple dotted eighth note on one side, quarter note on the other. Let's hear it dirty and then with a clean <laughs> Thank you. 
This is doing all the things that I want any delay to be able to do. The next one in here, I have set up for some chorusing. So I'm using some short delays over here. You can see, what do we have? Three milliseconds, 7.3 milliseconds, nine milliseconds, 10 milliseconds. I think I've got a bunch of others. So this is like an octo chorus over here. What do you have on the right side? I've got 11-ish milliseconds, 8 milliseconds, 7 milliseconds, and then 12. I've got a bunch of sine wave modulation happening. This is an amazing sounding chorus. <laughs> similar eight voice modulation idea. I've gone for shorter delays. They are all less than four milliseconds and I've added some feedback. You can control the polarity of the feedback to get different flanger style sounds out of this. You can also go into the mixer and control the individual polarity of each delay tap on there. Let's just hear this. <laughs> The other preset in there that I showed you essentially takes the chorus and uses the two feedback delays for a traditional delay. It was about 300 milliseconds on one side, 400 on the other, a bunch of cross feedback on there. It's so wet and epic on there. If you want to do the 2290 thing with the left channel phase reversed from the right channel, you can do that in here. I think I've done it right anyway. I don't have any filtering going on here, but I'm just using the feedback tap. So 333 milliseconds on the left and on the right, I believe. Yep, I'm correct there. The same amount of feedback. And then if you come into the mixer section over here, what do we do? We set the delay polarities, I believe. So you can set the feedback tap over here. You see I've panned it to the left all the way. 20 is the maximum on here. I know it's weird, it doesn't go to 100, but that's fine. And then the polarity is positive. If I go to the right feedback tap over here, which will be uh, this one, that's the level. 
pan to the other side and the polarity is negative. I'm gonna get that 2290 thing, the psychoacoustic effect when you have a signal that's essentially mono, pan to one side and then you flip the phase and pan it to the other, it does this. And if you heard those delays disappear, you are listening in mono. Make sure you listen in stereo. Let's add some modulation to that. I'm going to set the LFO so that it's on. We'll come in here and we'll leave the speed where it is. The phase, I'm gonna leave where it is and leave it as a sine wave. Then I wanna to come to the right feedback delay over here. I'll press the function button over there. I've got modulation set on already. Sources and LFO, I've set the depth to 40 over here. And I've basically just done the same thing on the left side as well. So there's the time. Modulation is on, source is the LFO, depth is at 40. Now I should have a lovely modulated version of what we just heard. We can of course create a ducking delay. What we wanna do is navigate to the expression section. This is expression number one, I'm gonna turn it on. And what I've done is I have targeted the delay level in the mixer and I've set the source to be the envelope. I've just cranked up the depth over here. I can set the polarity to plus or minus. I'm gonna set it to minus so it turns the delay level down. Let's have a listen to what that does. I'll start with it off and then kick it in. <laughs> We've heard a variety of different delays. We've heard modulation in there. You could set the LFO to modulate different parameters aside from just the delay time as well. If you wanted some sweat delays or you wanted panning delays in there, you could use the built-in envelope detector as a modulation source as well. There's so many opportunities to create cool sounds in here. You can also have some fun with the fact we've got eight different echoes in here. You could use some like uncorrelated delays. So what do I have here? Some really short delays, 34 and a half, 43, 54, 69. And then I think I've got four more over here, 89 and a half, 78 and a half, 98 and a half and 88.5. There's a bunch of feedback. This gives me like a faux reverb style effect. <laughs> It's nowhere near as convenient as just bringing up a reverb algorithm on there, but it's pretty cool. There's a bunch of character in there. I like that this fuses what at the time would have been like the cutting edge in terms of the number of parameters and control assignments available as well as the big display, but you kind of use it in an old school way, like the ADA stereo tapped delay 
or you know programming one of the old lexicon units on there to do what you want it to do. It's very, very involved. It's uh, definitely something I think you need a little bit of a background in sound design or to have spent a bunch of time with other delay units, but you definitely get out what you put in on this unit. So I think my favorite sound in there is just that first delay sound that I showed you with the four taps and a bit of modulation, but there are some killer chorus sounds in here and some really, really fun sounds at the start, like this turn the warp. This does like a space echo style thing, or I guess a tape style delay. Check this out.
The more I play with the DL8000R, the more I enjoy it. It's a pretty inspiring sounding unit. The tones are amazing. I love the modulation in there. It's a pretty well kept secret, I think, for a lot of people outside of the kind of rack gear nerd circles that I tend to travel in. But I can certainly see why so many people rave about this. I think it's in that tier below the absolute classics for me, like the TC2290 not only sounds amazing, but everything is laid out in front of you. Once you know how to use that, it's super quick and easy to dial in. Something like the Eventide H3000 or Eclipse can do a lot more than this. And they're similarly kind of fiddly to dial in. I think the Eclipse less so, but they just give you this incredible tone, so many great textures, so many inspiring new sounds, and they don't really require you to have to think too hard sometimes. You just bring up a preset and go. With the DL8000, it's in that zone where you really have to know what you're doing with delays to get what you want out of it. Even if you do know what you're doing, learning the user interface and trying to navigate the manual is pretty infuriating. I think it's actually crazy that this unit got made when it got made. The fact that it just says, hey, Here's a multi-tap delay. We've given you a bunch of controllers and filters. Have some fun with it. See what you can come up with. So I think if you're a tweaker, you're going to love this unit because it's very much a like no holds barred delay machine. You can get some crazy sounds out of it. I'm not sure if it's worth the price these go for nowadays. It's a bit of a tricky proposition, you know. There's some really cool things about it. Like I said, there are some definite downsides to it. I would personally recommend if you really want to deep dive delays, either get into the plugin world or get something like a Fractal FM3, the multi-tap delay and plex delay in there, give you a bunch of different delay lines and different ways to route them together. The delay algorithms and structures are a lot more varied than this. Similarly, an Eventide Eclipse, even though the Eclipse still goes for more money than this secondhand, you can do a lot of the things you can do on this with the Eclipse, but not vice versa. So it's definitely one of those rare birds in the rack world where if you're into what it does, it's pretty indispensable, but I wouldn't recommend it to like the casual rack fan. If you just want a nice sounding delay in your rig, I'd actually say go and get the AM8000R because that can do a bunch of generic reverb types, modulation, a bunch of effects at the same time, different ways to route them and some pretty sweet delays in there. But if you're a delay junkie, you need to try this unit at least once in your life. You can do so many great things with it. And it sort of feels like the end point of a particular type of effect that for whatever reason, historical or just because they're hard to use and you need a lot of expertise to program them, never really took off. There were a bunch of multi-tap delays in the 80s. I think the most famous one's probably the ADA STD-1 that could let you do some crazy modulation effects with the different delay taps. And this kind of builds on that legacy there. So it is an interesting unit in that regard. I really like the way it sounds, but I think what I'm gonna do is all these sounds I've programmed here, 
I'm just gonna plug those values into my Axe FX, save them as blocks, and then bring them up there. The power supply on this unit is, uh, it's an external war wart thing with the four prongs on there. Again, annoying to find and use. While there's so many upsides to this thing, again, like approach with caution would be my advice. But I really hope you enjoyed the tones today. Let me know your thoughts on the DL8000R in the comment section below, and let me know what interesting piece of retro rat gear I should check out next. If you like these kind of things, consider joining my Patreon or checking out the music that I make with my band Ragdoll. Again, a massive thank you to my buddy Brian Hook for getting me this unit to try out on the channel. Let me know how you liked it in the comments section below. Keep it greasy, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>